Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Unity's annual Unite conference has just happened in Amsterdam. Lots of news and announcements about the future. Unity sponsored this video and they invited me over to check out the conference. This was actually the first conference since I started using a camera in my videos, so a bunch of people recognize me. Thank you all for being so nice. It's always great to meet people in real life who enjoy watching and learning from my videos, so really, thank you. My voice is still quite a bit messed up from talking to so many people. These events are definitely extremely intense, although always a lot of fun. Now, the main thing is the keynote, so here's an overview. I originally wanted to do a super short summary, but there's actually quite a lot to talk about. First important thing is honestly just the general sentiment, given everything that's happened in the past two months. So they spoke a lot about a focus on stability, performance, visuals, and really just tightening everything. There are some interesting new announcements, but also a lot of just improving upon everything that already exists, which is what most people have been calling for, so I think that's a good thing. The message coming from the new CEO was indeed one of refocusing Unity on its core, focusing on games and making the engine the best it can be with a great focus on community. I think that's a great sentiment, and I truly hope that he can bring his community-focused vision for Unity to life. Honestly, for me, personally, right now, the main thing I want from Unity is really just stability, meaning stability in the company itself. I'm just hoping for some calm and no new scandals in the next few months. Thankfully, despite the fact that he only got the job two months ago, I would say the keynote already reflected part of that community-focused vision. There's lots of improvements, tons of downloadable samples, and a handful of tools. So pretty much everything that everyone wants. One of the main things is how they announce a new naming scheme. The next major version of Unity, instead of being called the 23 LTS, will simply be called Unity 6. I remember when they changed from Unity 5 to Unity 2017, and now apparently they're going back to normal, non-year numbers. Now, the version name is actually something that I've given my feedback on several times. The year version is usually one year behind, meaning right now in the year 23, the version you should be using is the 22 LTS. But for some people, especially beginners just starting to learn, they feel that the 22 version is outdated since we're already in 23, so they end up using a tech version which is not necessarily the most stable and end up with a frustrating experience. My feedback that I've said to Unity many times was simply increase the version number by one, but maybe this change, just using a number that has nothing to do with the year, maybe this will also help that problem. Along with the new naming scheme, they're also apparently pushing back on the release by a little bit. Usually the LTS version comes around in March. And for next year, Unity will have a beta out in March, so I'm guessing that the full release will only be out in something like September. Again, for this, I'm hoping that it means they are really focusing on stability, so hopefully this new release cadence should be a good thing. Oh, and also the 23.2 version is out right now. Then the most impactful part of the keynote for me was how they showcased some great graphics improvements for both URP and AGRP. They showcased a truly gorgeous scene called Fantasy Kingdom. This one is using the Fantasy Kingdom Synthi Ascent, which by the way, if you're interested, you can go pick it up in the Black Friday sale on the Synthi store right now. They used that asset, they polished up everything and made a truly gorgeous looking scene. Honestly, this is going to be the thing that I point people to whenever they say that low poly doesn't look good. I think this looks absolutely gorgeous. It goes to show the actual power of great lighting and great post-processing. This scene is using a GRP, although all the features they showcase, they are both for URP and a GRP. The first one is the GPU resident drawer. Now, I'm not a graphics programmer, so I'm not entirely sure what exactly it's doing, but apparently it's using the GPU instead of the CPU to calculate batches, which makes it a lot more performant with literally just one button click. Another addition is GPU occlusion culling. Like name implies, this uses the GPU, so again, super performant. Culling, if you don't know, basically means that you don't render things that are not visible, meaning things that are behind other objects should not be rendered. And this system is also dynamic, so as the rock moves in front of the camera, the number of vertices drawn goes down substantially. And best of all is it requires no preparation. Unity actually already has a culling system. I have a lecture on it in my Ultimate Unity Overview course if you want to learn about it. But first of all, that one is based on the CPU instead of the GPU. And secondly, it requires you to bake an occlusion map, so it has some setup required. Whereas this one requires absolutely no setup, you just enable it and anything that is in front of the camera automatically calls anything behind it. The other big graphics feature is what they are calling Spatial Temporal Post-Processing, or STP. This is an upscaler, so kind of like AMD's Fidelity Super Resolution or Nvidia's DLSS. So you can render your game at a small resolution, like for example 1080p, and then upscale it to something like 4K. This obviously makes it run much faster, and apparently this algorithm is good enough that it comes with no perceptible visual cost. Remember, all of this, all of these features, they are all working both HRP and URP. So these awesome features will benefit literally every game, even games on mobile, as long as they are on a compute-enabled device, which nowadays I believe is pretty much all of them. Honestly, this part really impressed me. 
I'm always a huge fan of one-click buttons to make everything faster, so here are three buttons that automatically make your game run much better. I am not a graphics programmer, so hearing that my games will render that much faster just by default, that is an awesome thing. Again, remember, none of this requires you to prepare or change your existing assets in any way. Just press one button and like magic, everything runs faster. Really impressive. And next comes another extremely impressive tool showcase. This is one that I've had my eye on for quite some time and something that a lot of people have been asking for. It's called Adaptive Pro Volumes. Basically, it automates the placement of light probes in your scene, so you no longer have to do it hand by hand, one by one. So that's a huge time saver. And then along with that comes some really high quality lighting, including some bounce lighting, so you can have some really high quality global illumination. This is something that people have wanted for a long time, basically an equivalent to Unreal's Lumen, and yep, this is it. I've been really impressed with this tool since I saw it announced, I believe, a year ago. But back then it was HGRP only, whereas now in Unity 6 it will be out for both HGRP and URP. Lighting is extremely important for making a game look good, and with global illumination it really makes it look excellent. Now from what I understand, technically this isn't real time. From what I understand, the probes are placed automatically and then they have to be baked. And then you can interpolate between various bakes to make the final gorgeous day-night cycle. So it technically requires a little bit of setup, but the results definitely look excellent. I am indeed looking forward to trying out this tool as Unity 6 comes closer. All in all, these four graphics improvements, making games instantly perform better and look excellent with global illumination, put all of these together and it will make every single Unity game look absolutely excellent. I'm not usually someone who cares too much about graphics. For me, I definitely prefer gameplay over graphics any day, but still, this part of the keynote really impressed me. Now, related to URP, there's also a nice new sample. This is the one that they've shown quite a while ago, and now you can go ahead and download it. It's one sample, but it's really four in one. You've got multiple scenes showcasing various use cases for URP. It starts off with a scene with neutral lighting. Then the garden shows off a scene with tons of lights. The desert scene, this one showcases lots of high quality lighting and some really interesting shaders with subsurface scattering. And then the cockpit, this one showcases a stylized VR view. Again, all of these are in URP. Personally, I think they all look excellent. You should definitely spend some time inspecting this sample if you want to see all of the new URP features. Yet another great new sample that is coming soon is Mega City Metro. This is a competitive cross-play multiplayer sample. Previously, Mega City was HGRP only and it was a bit janky, but now this has been ported to URP so it runs on everything. It uses DOTS netcode alongside lots of Unity multiplayer gaming services like game server hosting, matchmaking and VVox. I can confirm that I was at the show floor and I tried out the demo on a mobile phone and yep, everything worked great. People are always talking about how they want more samples, so this one should be another great one. It's coming out next year. Then possibly the big news is their AI tools are now available. AI is obviously the big hype right now. It has tremendous potential, but the tools are still actively being developed. I've been part of the closed beta for a while now, but since it was heavily under NDA, that meant I really couldn't do a video on it, so I haven't looked into them too much. There are essentially four tools. You've got Muse Chat. This is a chatbot, kind of like ChatGPT. The main benefit is how this one is trained on Unity's own documentation. So technically that means that it should be better than some like ChatGPT for Unity specific questions. Then you've got Muse Texture. This one lets you use AI to build textures using natural language. Again, this was trained specifically for making game textures. So they are all tellable and can easily have all kinds of repeating patterns alongside normal maps. The results do seem pretty good. For a final game, you might still want hand-drawn textures made by a professional artist, but in terms of speeding up the prototype stage, I think this tool can be quite useful. Instead of just a boring gray box prototype, you can quickly get some textures, so in that scenario, I think this tool can be extremely helpful. Another super helpful one is the third tool, which is Muse Sprite. Similar to the previous one, this lets you generate AI sprites. These can be anything that you described, like the many generative AI image tools that already exist. Although again, since this one was trained specifically on Unity data and game data, it should hopefully be better at generating game ready sprites as opposed to something like Stable Diffusion. Like the main thing is how it actually outputs transparent sprites. So no need for you to deal around in Photoshop, erasing the background or anything. The sprites are easy and ready to use. This one seems capable of drawing pretty much anything. You just say what you want and it gets drawn. And it also has a feature where you draw a sketch of what you want, which helps guide the AI generation. Honestly, I think this one, this tool, this would have been a game changer for me when I was just getting started in game dev 10 years ago. I used to only do 2D games because I could not model anything at all. 
Whereas nowadays I'm mostly focused on making 3D games, since now I do know how to use the asset store to get any visuals that I need, but if you do make 2D games, or really even in 3D games since you always need some sprites, then this tool looks potentially quite useful. These two AI tools also work directly inside the editor, meaning it is much faster to use these as opposed to going to something external. So again, I think for prototyping, where you really want maximum speed as much as possible, for that these tools do seem excellent. They should really help speed up all your iteration during the prototyping stage. For these AI tools, they highlighted how it was trained on data that they own. So this helps avoid one of the main issues with AI generation right now, which is if you don't own the inputs, then you can't own the outputs. So in this case, they made sure to own all the inputs so you can't generate anything without copyright issues. But again, that is still a legal gray area. So Unity is doing what several other companies like Adobe are also doing. They are committing to defend you in court in the unlikely event that there is a copyright challenge on any of the generated outputs. There is a detailed blog post and an FAQ where they talk about where they got all of the input datasets and how they license them. The fourth tool is Unity Synthesis. This is their real-time inference engine, meaning it's how you can run a model in the Unity runtime without needing any external connection to anything. This is related to something that Unity has had for quite a while, which was called Barracuda. If you've used the ML Engines package, then you already know what it is. Basically, you train a model, and then you can easily run that model using Unity Synthesis locally on any device. And importantly, is it supports all of the platforms that Unity supports, meaning that you can actually run some complex machine learning models directly on your phone. This is something that seems quite interesting, it seems like a very interesting piece of tech, but honestly, I'm still looking for a practical use case for it. One really impressive example is something that they showed on the keynote, although they didn't actually talk about what was impressive about it. It's a demo of a Pong game with some super high quality ray trace lighting, it looks gorgeous, and it's running on a phone, even though phones do not support ray trace lighting. I spoke with Mark Witten, who is the president of Unity Create, on the welcome party the day before, and he told me how this demo actually worked. Basically, the developer trained the model on millions and millions of high quality images rendered in Blender, and once the model was trained, all it needed was really just an input for the position of the paddles and the ball, and that's it. All the images that you see, these are all generated just based on those inputs. That's how we can look insanely realistic on a tiny mobile phone. I don't know just how practical this use case is, but it is definitely very ingenious. So those are the four announced tools, but they also showcase some more coming in the future. There's Animate. This one looks super useful. It's an AI tool for helping you build animations. Basically, you tell it in natural language to do something like a backflip, and it automatically generates a backflip animation. Like I said, nowadays I'm mostly working in 3D, so this one seems potentially quite useful to my particular use case. Then there's Behavior. This AI tool lets you describe a state machine using natural language, and then it generates that actual state machine with all of the various states. So definitely another interesting use case. And then there's Sketch. This one apparently lets you very quickly sketch out a level. You can say, get me a warehouse, and somehow it grabs one and places it in the world. Right away, obviously this makes me wonder where exactly are these models coming from. And this is also a collaborative tool, so you can use it alongside other people. These tools are going to be released at some point in the future, not sure when. And again, all these tools do seem to be quite useful in the prototyping stage for getting your ideas up and running extremely fast. For that use case, these tools all seem very useful. Then for the not so good news, pricing, these tools come as a subscription at $30 per month. By itself, that's not really bad news. All of the AI tools, they are all subscription based, so personally, I don't think this part is specifically an issue. What is an issue is the simple fact that there is no free tier at all. Not only that, but this is a separate subscription and there is nothing included if you already have a Unity Pro subscription. This is something that I've spoken very strongly in my feedback to Unity. I think it really absolutely needs some sort of free tier and some credits included for pro users. I know that AI is really expensive to train and to run, it requires tons of GPU power, so I really would not expect a completely free tool. But at the same time, these AI tools they are also quite fiddly, so they really need some way to try before you buy. They do have a free trial, but it's once and it's done. I guess that's better than nothing, if you want to try it out right now, you can go ahead and use that free trial. Like I said, I think these tools can be massively useful, especially for beginners and students who might really have no money, pretty much like myself 10 years ago. But with this paywall, I don't think it won't be accessible to those people. I truly think that this needs some sort of free tier, just a handful of credits per month to try it out for free, so just enough to generate some like 10 sprites and 10 textures per month. Like I said, I understand AI is really expensive, so I would not expect a massive amount, but definitely would expect some tiny amount. Pretty much like many other AI tools. 
There's a lot of them that of course they've got paid pricing, but they also include some free credits every month. And I really think that it's pretty insane how pro users who are already paying a decent amount to Unity don't get anything at all. That Unity subscription should really include at least some credits. Now the good news is that this is only the beta release, meaning that things will definitely change in the future. So I'm really truly hoping that it's this way because they intentionally wanted to limit how many people use this tool at this stage, basically so they have more time to improve things and handle the scaling on their backend. And then when these tools are production ready, I am hoping they will announce a new free tier alongside it. Like I said, I see a lot of potential for these tools, especially for prototyping and for beginners. So I really hope they eventually add a free tier so that anyone can benefit. Web browsers also got a bunch of improvements, specifically on mobile. It seems they're really betting on web mobile being a big thing. Something they announced is web GPU. This is a new standard that the various browser makers are trying to make happen, basically to allow the browser to have direct access to the GPU. This would obviously massively increase the performance of any web games. So this makes me wonder if there won't be a future, kind of like back in the days of Flash, where web games were awesome and all over the place. Then another big thing is Vision OS slash Polyspatial. This is the Unity SDK for working with the Apple Vision Pro that is coming out next year. Previously it was invite only, but now it's available for everyone. AR and mixed reality is definitely an area that I've been wanting to cover for a long time, so hopefully I can find the time to at least do a quick introduction tutorial on it. The Apple Vision Pro looks like a potentially interesting machine. I mean, it's definitely not going to be mass market due to how high the cost is, but in terms of tech, it does look quite interesting. So if that also interests you, now you can go ahead and try out the SDK to prepare for it. Unity Dots is already production ready and they still keep working on it. Again, focusing on making it more stable and polishing everything. This time, they are now improving everything based on actual user feedback. A bunch of people have been using it since it's been production ready for quite a while now. And based on that, they are making the next versions as best as they can be. Personally, I've been re-researching Dots these past few weeks. I really would like to put out an updated Getting Started video, hopefully still by before the end of this month. Then they announced Unity Cloud. This is a bunch of tools to make working as a team much more streamlined. You can easily sync assets in the Asset Manager. It works well with Unity version control. There's improvements to CI/CD. The dashboard is more streamlined and so on. Personally, I only work alone, so I don't really have much use for this myself. But if you do work in a team, or if you do game jams with other people, then perhaps this might help streamline that process. Okay, so that's my overview of the keynote. All in all, it really seems like a nice focus on stability and incremental improvements, which is exactly what people have been asking about. The new CEO with his vision for a community-focused unity, I really like that vision and I really hope it becomes reality. But like he himself said, talk is cheap and really what counts are actions, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how he guides the company over the next few months. But based on this keynote as it is, I would say the future doesn't look very bright. Especially the graphics improvements, those look absolutely massive. Oh, and one final quick mention, the Unity Black Friday sale is live right now. I covered a bunch of my highlights in the last video. There's flash deals up to 70% off, so keep refreshing the page to see what's on sale. The Cinti store is also having a Black Friday sale, so if you'll need anything from Cinti specifically, check out their store. And I also made a Black Friday deal discount on my courses. So if you need anything, check out the links in the description. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.